Hello and welcome to this video. I've done a video prior to this about five reasons why I love being a recruitment consultant and with all jobs, ups and downs always occur. So I just want to talk about five reasons whether you're looking to get into recruitment, you're wondering if it's for you. These are five things that may or may not put you off. Now this is going to be a bit of a negative, um, however it's somewhat realistic video so you'll know what to expect if you're looking to become a recruitment consultant and if you are working in recruitment whether you've got your own business or you're working as a consultant i'm sure you're going to share some of these views so the number one thing that stands out to me is a lot of things are out of your control so the first one i'll put it down as communication so a lot of the times employers if you sent a cv to an employer who you think is really suitable and for whatever reason the employer doesn't come back or they they hire internally they you know somebody comes to them directly there's a lot of breakdown in communication another thing can be you get in touch with a candidate they say they're interested you go to book an interview the employer likes them um, and they don't come back so they've either secured another job or they've changed their mind they've got a counter offer now counter offer is another thing if someone goes through the interview process and they're all happy and they don't show up for their first day and you're left wondering why so in terms of that, it's, you know, it could be a number of possibilities they receive a counter offer and then they don't communicate it with you. Um, you're left a little red faced and slightly out of pocket because it comes off your, your figures and your target as well. So with that, bringing me to second point, which is targets, KPIs, and also the threshold, which I'll go into. So KPIs varies different companies from company to company. Now the KPIs can look like you know you have to make 50 calls a day or you have to make 20 calls a day or 100 even i've seen um i've worked in a place where you had to make 80 calls a day which pretty much everybody faked and the boss never you know figured it out he just thought what a wonderful team i've got he actually had it at 60 and then he put it up to 80 because he was like wow everyone's hitting 60 and we put it up to 80 and overnight everyone hit 80 so he's probably going to put it up to 100 um, until he figures out that everyone was faking it. Um, so yeah, KPIs, you can get KPIs. What I mean by that is you've got mini targets in your day, so or your week or your month. Now, the small KPIs around, how, <coughs> excuse me, you have to send the amount of KPIs, wait, you, you have to send, sorry, that the cough threw me off, but you have to send um, a certain number of CVs. And you also have to book in a certain number of interviews. They're there for a reason. A lot of companies think if you hit these targets, you're going to, no matter what happens, miraculously, you're going to make money, um, which isn't always the case. I mean, I have one of the lowest CV sends, but also my target that's important to me and the only one that really matters is revenue and the amount of placements and the amount of people you end up helping to get a job and also helping companies to get the people that they need. So... You know, it took my boss a while to sort of, you know, understand that. But, you know, it works for me. It might not work for other people. And KPIs are there for a reason. Um, but they're used as the bread and butter in most companies. So it's really off-putting. Um, if you can't hit those targets, you're just, uh, you know, chances are, especially early on, they'll see it as you, you're not good. Um, another thing that does get, get me down in the dumps is the threshold. And the threshold is what you have to earn before you earn commission. So usually companies on average would have a target of £10,000 per month and you have to make three to £5,000 and then anything after that would be, you know, what you'll be earning um, on in terms of commission. So if your threshold is £5,000 and you make £10,000, you'd only get paid on £5,000. The £5,000, whatever threshold you have, is there to cover your costs and sometimes it does roll over to the next month. So if you haven't made any money this month, your next threshold would have to be £10,000. And a lot of good consultants have one or two bad months and build up a large threshold. And what do they do? They end up leaving. They go somewhere else so they can reset. And bosses put that in as a safety mechanism. Now, some good companies will not have a threshold. So always look into that if you're looking for a position. Um, which brings me to number three is the working hours. Typically, you've probably heard it's long hours, hard work, and it doesn't have to be. A lot of companies do work from 8.30 to 5.30, and the reason being is 
you know, chances are um, you want to catch candidates just before they go to work, which I don't usually do because who wants to talk to a recruiter on their way to work oh, on a Friday afternoon as well after work. Um, so usually lunch breaks work very well. So I, I, I mean, I don't mind not taking a lunch break, but most times out of 10, I just have a quick bite to eat um, as well with that. Bringing me to onto the sort of next point, um, which would be the, you know, some times of the year are very quiet towards December. A lot of companies say, you know, we're, we're going to be thinking about what we're hiring for next year. Also, certain industries, if you're working in construction, can be heavily influenced by, you know, an election or, you know, anything along those lines. If the housing market's a bit slow and um, those sorts of things are going to affect. So it's a very volatile industry. God forbid if a recession happens, companies automatically overnight stop hiring and, you you know, you're left scrambling as to who to bring on. Um, and who to work with so it can be very volatile in that sense so my advice is to find an industry that's all, you, all year round or a company that hire for a lot of positions like admin administration finance are always going to be there no matter what there'll obviously be redundancies if there's a major recession and which brings me to the fifth point is it doesn't have much effect on me but a lot of people the basic salary is very low um, you know, typically it's around the 18 to 25 mark, especially if you're getting started. Um, you'll probably be 99% of people will be in that range, even if it is in, you know, a big city. And um, so the basic salary is quite difficult to achieve. Um, and it's purely a commission based role. And a lot of things are out of your hands. And um, if you can't get started and you don't have many, you know, positions to work on many accounts it can be very tough, very slow. You know, if you're building up clients, you're going to hit your threshold. Um, so it is a very target driven industry but on the flip side um if you can make it work recruitment is probably one of the better industries to get into um it's a no qualification entry level role but you can actually make six figures you know quicker than any doctor or lawyer all my friends are lawyers and i own more than them um you know i didn't have to fork out so much money going to law school so yeah it's a fantastic industry there are five things i don't like about recruitment but you know, as a whole, personally, I love it.